Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about some file management in Automatic 11.11, specifically around models and LoRa files. If you've been using Stable Diffusion for a while, you're likely starting to accumulate a bunch of these, and we have some options to help organize all of those things. These are just a couple of things that I'm using. You have a lot of options, but this might work for you. So I'll take you through some of the thought process, how I got this set up, and look at a couple of other things along the way that I do as part of my environment setup here. So I was using this batch file for to start up my automatic 11.11 application, and all it did was change the directory to Stable Diffusion Web UI and call web UI user dot bat. This will probably look familiar to people. Let's take a look at this file in particular and see what is in there and you'll start to see the rationale behind some of this. So what I had going on in here uh, is I added this git pull which checks git to make sure automatic 11.11 is up to date. Uh, I left these blank of course so they can just kind of do their own default actions and then we have this command line, our command line arguments area that we can add information to. A lot of people use Xformers, some other performance management here. And we have a slew of options available. If you look at the automatic 1111 documentation, there's a whole page about all of the variables that we can pass into this command line arguments. One of the interesting things that we can provide to the startup of our automatic 11.11 instance are these paths. We can tell it for this type of file, look here. Okay, that's a really helpful, especially in a few scenarios. So what I was thinking is you can organize your information in a number of ways, whatever makes sense for how you are using automatic 11.11. My particular uh, thought was to organize these things and I just created a models folder. You can see this is outside of my stable diffusion models folder, right? This is up a few levels. It just happens to be kind of all grouped together under stable diffusion, but it doesn't have to be. This could even be on a different disk completely. Uh, if you have other hard disks with more space, this switch will also help you. And as a matter of fact, if you have so many models um, that you have them spread out over multiple disks, this will definitely help you. Uh, so if you're running out of space, this is a good a good reason too. And if you want to just group them together, what I'm doing is grouping them together sort of by topic. I'm thinking, you know, realism, uh, architecture, RPG, anime, cars, how, however you think it makes sense to group them together for you or maybe you you have a whole other uh, set of ideas that you want to group them but get an idea of how you want to group these things and where you want them to go and just make the folders even if they're you know if, of course if they're empty for now it's um, it's fine and you can always populate them with models and things after so I made a models folder one for just kind of general purpose stuff and one for RPG art and uh, I put some information in there and then I likewise did a corresponding one for LoRa files. Now after you after you make the folders and organize your models you'll want to tell Automatic 11.11 where to look for those things and you use these arguments in the variable. So what that looks like is this. Uh, don't be intimidated I'm gonna walk through this if this looks like it's a lot. It really isn't that bad. Uh, let's let's look at this batch file and this batch file is going to replace this web UI user batch file I don't mean replace it directly replace the functionality of um, I mean I suppose I could just call this batch file web UI user dot bat and be done with it but while I was experimenting with getting this set up I kept this separate call it whatever you want the first thing we have here is we create a menu and you give some you ask some questions. You can choose one, two, three, and there's a practical limitation. I forget what the limitation is. I only have three. You can have many. It doesn't have to be three. This is what each option is. Please make a choice. And then what do you, how do you handle the choice? If you choose one or two or three and they have to be listed in 
dis, uh, descending order like this. What do you do with that information? Skip around the file, because there's going to be a lot of information in this file. S skip around to the corresponding section. So we're going to skip to the RPG section because that'll make sense. Let's just assume we picked two for the purpose of this demonstration. We're going to skip all of this information and we're going to go to this RPG. Not we aren't going to do it. The script is going to do it, but you know what I'm saying. Um, we, and so then it's going to start processing these commands. It's going to bypass all of these commands and start processing these commands. And it's going to say, okay, first thing I'm going to do is check for automatic 11.11 updates. That's just something that I used to do in the old web UI user batch files. So I wanted to make sure that was still here. All that does is um, check git for the latest commits on automatic 11.11 and install them. I also copied these. These were just um, in their default values. So I copied those over. I don't want to mess with those at all. Then it says, okay, you made the RPG selection. We're going to load only RPG models and lore files into the command line arguments variable. So what do I do? I start populating this variable with the arguments I want. The first one is this, because that's what I'm using. I'm not using Xformers. And I have a space and then a caret, which is the six key on a US keyboard. I'm using Windows. So this tells the batch file, go to a new line, keep adding information. You could pile this all into one big line that just kind of wraps around here. That I feel gets difficult from a human standpoint to process. The computer, of course, doesn't give a crap. but um, it's easier for me to kind of read and organize and edit and maintain this. So use a space and a caret at the end of these things to keep it broken up. You try to imagine uh, this, if this is going to be read by the system as all being on one line. Then I give it my checkpoint directory, which I called models RPG. I give it my LoRa directory, which I called LoRa RPG. Update all extensions is a handy switch that I use. That just goes out and updates all your extensions. It's something I typically do when I fire up automatic 11.11 anyway, once the UI is up. But then you have to apply, restart the UI, and a lot of times you actually have to just close out of um, close out and, and start from scratch again anyway. So I figure just do it at this point before it's, uh, while it's starting up fresh. This argument says don't download the default model. Since you're doing your own model management anyway, uh, I thought this would be important to have just so that you know, you're not wasting disk space or anything else. And then auto launch launches the automatic 11.11 UI in a browser. And then this says go to end, which means skip all of this until you get to end. And at the end, we just call Stable Diffusion Web UI dot bat, which is what we used to call here in the other Web UI user bat. So we don't need this anymore. Um, everything that's here is now here. Or you could just call this, I could just call this Web UI dash user dot bat, I guess. It's essentially the same functionality. Uh, and so you would create a section like this for each topic that you have that you however you've decided to lay this out if you have a particular workflow that you're working on like if you have one that's just you know my high res stuff and it's going to be all the things that you need for really high res art versus a kind of scratch concept kind of quick work type of of assets that you want to work with you could organize it by those kinds of things and anyway however you've decided to lay this out you'd have a corresponding section for each of that folders that match all of that, and a menu item that matches all of that. And then once you do that, save it into a batch file. And then I just threw the batch file on my desktop because uh, why not? I, I mean, you could put it anywhere, um, but I just have it here. And then when you launch it, what it looks like is, which one do I want? Do I want to load all my models in LoRa? Do I want to load RPG only for kicks for the purpose of this demonstration? We'll, uh, let me just make that a little bigger so you can read that. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll go with two, sticking with RPG. It's going to check for updates, which I'm already up to date. It's going to load my models. It's going to check 
the repositories for all the extensions like we saw. It's going to see if anything needs to be updated, and it will. And it's going to load Automatic 11.11 in my browser. And now you can see what I have here are only the two RPG files, except, and I want to note this, there's one other interesting behavior that Automatic 11.11 does. Now, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would rely on this in case they change this functionality, but if you still have anything sitting out in models, stable diffusion, it will also read this along with the, the folder that you told it to, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but it is true. I tested it. So if you would want to have a bunch of files still in the default location and then have maybe subsets or other ones that you add with it, you can do that too which is kind of cool. You get the best of both worlds. However, I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> I think it's supposed to disregard the default folders and obey what you told it to do, which was only load files from this particular location. But as of now, the behavior of Automatic 11.11 is it will also include any of the models that are still in the default location, even if you told it to look elsewhere. Now, you have just this subset of information to work with. And likewise, if you look in, uh, if you look in Laura's, the only Laura I have is this Diablo one, and that's the one that I have in my RPG folder here. I think disk space and organization are the two real drivers for this. Another thing that I think would be helpful to folks is I'm using this Civit AI helper, which also helps to keep the information organized. They, there are a few of these model extensions that you can get, and you can get this Civit AI helper right from the extensions area of Automatic 11.11. But I find this one helpful. What this does is if you scan your folders, it will go out, check Civit AI, grab a thumbnail image, grab some metadata, and incorporate it into your folder locations. And now you can see actually it just popped a preview image and uh, some information about this LoRa, it'll do it for LoRa's models and, and a couple of other file types. You'll see now, you'll have the thumbnail associated with the models. You'll have the thumbnail associated with the LoRa's. Another handy thing is have this LoRa and you hover down here, you get some additional information. You can change the preview image, go straight to the model information in Civit AI, this has the trigger words that are associated with this LoRa, and you can push them right in. And then for this preview image, any of the information that is available for this preview image, you can also click this, and it'll say, now it says, a Lilith in the style of Diablo with the trigger words and everything you need. Then you can just also just click this, and it'll add the LoRa in there too. And then... You can essentially recreate this image just by the Im information that came out along for the ride with the LoRa. That's another way to keep your information and your files organized. Of course, if you had a ton of stuff here, this would start getting um, you know, pretty packed as well, especially since these thumbnails are kind of large. And so it helps to, I think, organize them by topic or theme or, or purpose and then you can keep them organized. And also, if you're starting to accumulate a lot of this and running out of space, let's just generate this for kicks while we're sitting here. Okay. I hope that was helpful to someone. I try to answer questions and things when people ask them, so I'll keep an eye out for any comments. I have a couple other ideas that I'll be making some videos for, so if you're already a subscriber, thanks for subscribing, and uh, if not, it might be worth keeping an eye on my channel. I hope this was useful for you, and thank you for watching.